But I said, there's a loophole. It's not a loophole that's bad. It's a good loophole. God said it there. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, for your past sins, for your present sins. But you got to stay asking for forgiveness and you got to repent. You got to make a choice. You got to try to stop, stop doing evil things. Try to live a life pleasing to God. Does it make sense? The only reincarnation you're going to have in this world is through Christ. Read between the lines when you're born again. That's, that's the reincarnation that the Bible talks about. Being born again in the body of Christ. Reincarnation. You are reincarnated as a new creature. Same body. Same outward appearance. You're not transformed to a dog. You're not coming out of the baptism as a butterfly. You're coming back as the same person you were with some new insights, with a new way of thinking, a new way of life, a new way of living, away from how you used to be. You understand? It's only three ways People don't understand this part, okay? You give your life to Christ. You believe Jesus died on the cross. You give your life to Christ. But the Bible also says you got to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You got to be washed in the water. And you got to be washed in the blood. Those three stimulations, you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven. You have to be. I didn't say you have to be filled with tongues. I said the Holy Spirit. And everybody has different spiritual gifts. Well, if you operate in the spirit, you're going to know the truth. You're not going to be living in the spirit of error. You're living in the spirit of truth. And the truth will set you free. Free from what? How you used to be. Because you're born again. If you was an adulterer before God returned to you and God gave his life for you and you're no longer an adulterer. You don't still go around committing adultery. Do you understand? If you were a liar before you gave your life to Christ, he do away with the lies. It might not happen overnight, but it's gradually going to happen. If you truly love Christ, if you truly live, try to live a life pleasing to him, you're going to do away with a lot of things. Because you're trying to please God. You're not trying to be the same way you used to be. Right? You were a fornicator before you gave your life to, life, to God. Now you learn how to abstain from sex. Do you understand? Or find you a wife or a husband. Does it make sense to you? You start trying to live a life pleasing to God. You want to go to heaven. And you know it's stimulations in order to be there. You know you can't walk around sleeping with every tongue, dick, and hair like, like, uh, like my mama used to say. You understand? And call yourself a Christian. Call yourself a follower of Christ. You can't be with somebody 18 years and live in fornication and be like, well, come in law marriage, we married. What about our marriage in the eyes of the Lord and in front of a preacher or a man of God? Getting married by in front of a man of God. That's another deception, a great deception. I'm glad Alabama did away with common law marriage years ago. You don't remember that? Oh, you can't use that no more. Oh, I'm married. No, you ain't. Not even in the, in the law of Alabama. <laughs> no more coming law marriage. You have to do the right thing if you want to save your soul. Because no fornicator would inherit the kingdom of heaven. Or you can shack up and not have sex. It's up to you. Your choice. Your choice. Scripture does not lie. There's a lot of things that can keep you from inheriting the kingdom of heaven. Do you know that? Why you think it say work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? That's why you say study to show yourself approved to be a good workman. How are we supposed to help people with scripture? I don't supposed to send you to no psychiatrist. I really don't. Now if that's what you want to do, that's on you. So you want to sit there and tell somebody all your problems when God's there to do the same. You ready to spend hundreds of dollars on laying back in the chair 
I'm gonna tell you why this works. Cause people don't want no input most of the time. They just want to tell everything and pay somebody to listen to you. You know you can talk to God for free, and He'll answer all your problems, and He'll fix you correctly. Better than any psychiatrist can, cause He's a psychiatrist. He's everything. Therapy. Hmm. Got some therapy for you. It's called the Lord. <laughs> therapy. His Bible. Therapy. I watched a video the other day, yesterday, by Duff Lundgren, the actor. And he was talking about his life and talking about how he met this woman. Watch this. How he met this woman. And he was going through dark times in his life and he couldn't find himself and he figured out his purpose. He said the woman, the woman told him to go to therapy and meditate. And you can better yourself. <sighs> Let me tell you some people. You better be careful. Something was left out. But in the world, that's cool. If you want to live for the world. But if you want to live in Christ, you might want to add Jesus to the mix. The Bible says meditate. Not in the way yoga's yoga meditation. A Buddhist meditation. Clear your head sometime. You ain't gotta put these two hand signs together. You're not trying to open your third eye. You're trying to get in tune with God. But he said it worked for him. And you know, a lot of people gotta hear that. Well, I'm finna try therapy. And I'm finna try meditation. You see, they got all kind of things out there. It's kind of weird that a woman led them to that. Old man, you. You might want to find a woman that's going to lead you to God. You know, John Lennon was a confused, talented man. I read a story on him. His wife was skilled in the dark arts. <laughs> fortune telling all these things he'll go he'll go to Jesus and then he'll get pulled back into the dark arts go to Jesus get pulled back in the dark arts because his wife led him look up look it up the, the enemy does not want you to come to the knowledge of the truth I don't know if John Lennon died of his sins or not I know he was on the fence backwards and forwards backwards and forwards backwards and forwards make up your mind old man you the leader anyway. I'm trying to tell y'all something, man. I almost fell victim to the same snare. But God delivered me. Glory be to God. He delivered me. Not therapy. Not my family members. Not my pastor. God. God saved me. Forever learning. Never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. This man studied so many different doctrines. You see what studying all these different doctrines does? Drift you further and further away from the truth. People start concocting their own gospel. Their own way of life. I take a little bit from this, a little bit from that, a little bit from that. A little bit of psychiatry, a little bit of Sigmund Freud, a little bit of Einstein. A little bit of Hawkins. And a little bit a little bit of the real God. I take a little bit of him. I don't really like his wrathful side. I, I don't like the heaven and hell. I believe we can do all we can do all things. You know, God is setting our power to do whatever our minds said to do. If that was true. And it is true to an extent. But it's certain healing that technology can't do. That doctors can't do. Smart as Stephen Hawkins was, I never saw him get out that wheelchair and walk. But he probably could have if he trusted in the Lord. But he trusted in science. 
It's kind of weird. A lot of these scientists on their deathbed kind of say after they about to die, there's a God. <laughs> there's a God. Some kind of revelation I always hit them before they die. There's a God. All these years you just spent disproving the fact that there's a God and then all of a sudden you get ready to die. There's a God. Why wow, y'all better pay attention? Pay attention, people. Many of them have come to that realization when they're knocking on death's door. They're like, maybe I messed up. Maybe I mislead, misled many. Lord, forgive me, for I know not what I do. And that's a good thing. I hope a lot of them came to a revelation towards the end of their life that like I was wrong you understand I was wrong I, forgive me Lord I messed up but man is so stubborn and so hard headed that we rather just die in our sin and ask for forgiveness I'm not perfect people. I have my flaws. But I don't care how imperfect I am. I'm going to spread that word with all honesty and all truth. I'm not going to spread the word according to my imperfections. I'll talk about things that only pleasing to me that I have to spread it in truth. What's the use of Christ giving me this word? Like Paul said, when he came to him, he had to spread it. And I can relate. Because God didn't have to give me this word. But he gave it to me. Because he loved me. And he had to love you. Because he gave it to me to spread to you. He gave me this gift. And I don't want to lose it. By not spreading it. Have a blessed day.